Hello everyone and welcome to the re re I guess reopening of Dragon Ball Tour a season two and a half. I'm actually gonna call this one season 2.5.2 just because I did already start season two and a half but I never actually finished it so this time I decided to actually commit myself to actually finishing Dragon Ball Terraria this time. I recently saw the new kind of Terraria Ball Super which is not the same thing as Dragon Ball Terraria. I saw the um the devlog of Terraria Ball Super and I was like this actually seems pretty cool, so I decided to go back and finish Dragon Ball Terraria properly this time. So for those who aren't familiar with kind of Dragon Ball Terraria, it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. It just combines Dragon Ball and Terraria as well. So of course what Dragon Ball is known for is transformation and well the Calamity add-on mod and some others actually adds quite a little bit of transformations. As you can see, these are all the kind of standard transformations within kind of Dragon Ball Terraria. So the ones you can see here is Ultra Instinct, uh, Potential Unleashed, and as well as the iconic Super Saiyan, which everyone knows and loves. But if you kind of click this area here, there are some bonus non-canon or just kind of minor forms that you can kind of get a quick sneak peek of here. So the first form is kind of False Super Saiyan. This was in the Lord Slug movie, as well as kind of, this is Super Saiyan, but it's just kind of massive Super Saiyan. So it's the form that Goku has after exiting the hyperbolic time chamber. Yes, I would like to unlock each and every form here. That is going to be kind of a bit difficult, but I'll kind of explain why that'll be in the not really so kind of near future. Anyways, we're just going to do a kind of standard Terraria start here. So I think this is a star bag from Calamity, but anyways, which first and foremost includes building homes for everyone. Alright, so we're going to switch gears a bit and switch into post commentary, which will kind of be the main format for the rest of the series kind of going forward. I want to try something a bit new, and it's a little bit easier to kind of do it this way. I'll, I guess, pass me at this point. We'll kind of jump in uh, every now and then, and we'll just kind of say whatever is on my mind, or if I kind of see something particularly interesting or shocking. So while I'm kind of building this kind of little starter home here, I'll kind of explain briefly how this kind of mod works. As you can see, I have this bar here that's called that has zero out of a thousand. This is the key bar, and you need key to actually use any of the attacks in the mod pack. So you won't have to be worrying about key a whole lot in kind of the early game, uh, because key drains very quickly, and there's going to be quite a few abilities that you'd want to use over actually using any damage. Thankfully, Dragon Ball Toria does have a few kind of early game like melee weapons and ranged weapons that you can kind of use instead of kind of the standard key attacks. So right now I'm building a lot of homes to kind of coax the merchant into moving in uh, because the merchant sells what is called scrap metal and scrap metal is used in kind of a lot of uh, kind of early game crafting recipes. And so before we actually even get into like any of the kind of the weapons and whatnot, we kind of need the merchant in to kind of buy his stuff. Anyways, after finishing the two houses, I decided to explore the left side of the world just because we do need money to uh, get the merchant to move in as well. As you can see, I picked up an item called the Stable Key Crystal. We're going to need kind of a lot of these in the early game to actually officially get the wheel uh, rolling with this mod. Thankfully, there is a pretty easy way to um, actually kind of get these and involve slime. While I was traveling the desert, I came across an underground temple, which is pretty handy as they usually contain a uh, golden stuff kind of in the middle chamber here, as well as having some pretty decent accessories if you're lucky enough to kind of um, uh, get them. Anyways, here I got a sandstorm in a bottle, so that will help out a lot early game when it comes to mobility. Nice find. Anyways, I decided to kind of collect all the items in the chest, didn't really get to see what they all were. Um, but I headed down, even though I knew that this was the desert, which is pretty dangerous to explore in the early game, but I was kind of hoping to see if it would connect into like a sandstone house or something. Unfortunately, it did not. After recalling back to the surface, I decided to explore the right side of the world just to kind of see if I could find a decent mine shaft, as I was going to need quite a lot of cobwebs to turn into silk in order to kind of make armor. I wanted to kind of make armor kind of as soon as possible because armor is one of the more consistent ways you can increase your uh, key. I unfortunately did not find a kind of mine shaft. Instead, I kind of found the crimson. I didn't really want to stay here kind of too long because early game crimson, of course, is brutal. And we had some kind of weird world generation stuff going on here, so not sure what happened there. I went back to explore on the left side of the surface just to see if I could find a mine shaft, and I was greeted by a Cidreon. Well, that's not good. 
wonder if I can jump over this. So I continued exploring the left side of the world until I eventually came across a cave entrance, so that's pretty nice. I unfortunately forgot to bring torches, so I just had to waste a shine potion. I didn't have any recalls, I don't believe, and I didn't really feel like walking back anyway, so I decided just burning a shine potion would probably be the best bet here. Unfortunately, this mine shaft just kind of ended. It clearly connects into the desert. I was hoping that there's going to be maybe a cave system that wasn't really in the desert, but at least maybe somewhere close by so I could uh, hopefully kind of pop in and out. Didn't really want to explore the desert kind of this early up until I actually have some decent um, means of defense. Anyways, just kind of kept digging down to make my uh, own cave system until I stumbled across a cave system like I did here. I think this cave system was pretty small, but I mean, I guess it's kind of better than just kind of digging straight down into the side whenever I kind of saw something of uh, um, interest. Also did get quite a few ores along the way, so that's always pretty nice. Unfortunately, I didn't really find anything of value down in the cave system, just some ore, and didn't really kind of lead anywhere. So I decided to recall back to the surface to regroup, as well as expand the houses a little bit more, as I think the merchant was the next NPC to move in, so I kind of wanted to get him uh, moved in so I can kind of start the mod kind of officially. So after I finished um, expanding the house, I decided to build some crafting interfaces. So I built a furnace just to put that outside. And I also did put a workbench right next to it afterwards, just so I can kind of start getting some crafting going on. As I did have a, quite a fair amount of ores, and so I figured it's probably time to kind of upgrade my pickaxe as well as make an anvil. Then I went to the guy just to kind of remind myself of uh, the amount of crafting materials I was going to need. First thing we needed was a Z table, which takes quite an amount of stable creek crystals. The Z table is kind of the basic crafting interface you'll need in order to actually make any weapons in this mod. So while I was waiting for it to be day so the merchant can hopefully move in, I decided to kind of go out at night to hopefully kill some zombies and whatnot just to get some more stable key crystals and hopefully maybe get enough to where the, when the merchant moves in in the morning I can just buy the scrap metal and I would already have the 20 or so stable key crystals that I would eventually need. As you can see I'm not really kind of faring too well, not having any I guess ranged weapons in the early game really does kind of hamper you when you're kind of fighting demon eyes. Anyways after I respawn I decide to go explore the right side of the world and kind of hopefully uh, push past the uh, crimson because I figured that you know killing enemies during the nighttime isn't really going to be an effective way to kind of gain stable key crystals and to my luck I actually did encounter a uh, another cave system it did have a chest at the beginning so I was kind of hoping that this one would be pretty big and this time I actually did remember to bring torches this time unfortunately the cave just kind of led into the underground crimson so i immediately just kind of ran back up to the surface because i definitely was not ready to kind of face the underground crimson at this point i continued my journey towards the right and i eventually came across a snow biome that had a i don't know what the structure is called so i'm just going to call it a frozen house which really isn't all that inaccurate um unfortunately did not find a magic mirror or anything like that just kind of some standard um, building accessories, which I don't really ever plan on using. Eventually, I made it out of the snow biome, and I came across a pretty interesting structure, which I was actually pretty happy to see. Oh, it's one of these. I wonder what sword's going to be in here. So let me grab this chest real quick. Oh, that's lucky. Nice, got a power pole. So the power pole is of course from Dragon Ball Terraria, and as you'll quickly find out, the power pole is a really overpowered early game weapon. Um, if it was up to me, I'd probably nerf it by just kind of a little bit. Uh, when I made it down into the shrine, I actually did not find any swords. I don't think this is the sword shrine I was thinking it was. Within the shrine, I just kind of found a trinket of chi, which gave some pretty... I guess okay standard buffs, nothing really too earth shattering or really kind of groundbreaking, but I mean I didn't really have any other accessories so it was I guess just a net benefit overall. Now right next to that shrine there was a living tree which I guess was a pretty nice find. Um, living trees usually have houses in their roots that have some decent items. 
Oh. No, yeah, that's unfortunate. There's even no cases underneath. This is the, probably the worst living tree I've ever seen. Thankfully, there was a, another living tree kind of right next to it, which connected to the crimson, but I mean, I kind of felt pretty confident when it came to uh, kind of getting through the crimson at this point. There was a chest right next to it, so I decided to loot that. I, of course, explored the kind of tree itself just to see if there was another kind of living house kind of at the bottom, or at the very least, like a somewhat decent cave system, which to my surprise, there was. I decided again to explore in the cave system because I wanted to finish exploring the right side of the world just to kind of see where the dungeon or which side uh, the dungeon was on. Thankfully the power pole kind of made traversing through the crimson pretty easy. Well I guess we shouldn't really say easy because I almost died there. As you can see the kind of range and distance that you can attack is pretty long. Anyways I came across yet another pair of living trees so I kind of wonder what was uh, going on there while there's so many living trees spawning. There's actually a third one that pops up. I don't think there's normally this many living trees in one world spawn. But I could be wrong. Now just shortly past the trio of living trees there was the dungeon. Um, of course can't really do much here yet until much later on. So I just kind of press forward with kind of filling out the rest of the map, which I did find the Radiant Sea, so that's pretty cool. I of course teleported home and found a pretty rare mob. Oh, it's a piggy! Unfortunately, it must die. Anyways, after killing the pig, I went to the merchant to go buy some scrap metal. I didn't really kind of have enough material to kind of fully start the mod, and as you can see, I kind of ran out of money a little bit there. So I went back to a chest to go buy some more, as well as kind of buy a piggy bank just to kind of store my coins. You know, I think I bought a little bit too much. I think that's better. I think I could probably take on King Slime right now if I actually build a proper arena. Well, I guess I should decide if I plan on playing a Revengeance mode or not. I think I'll kind of leave it as it is. So remember when I said where I knew of a way to get stable key crystals that involved a lot of slime? Well, I was alluding to kind of King Slime. Uh, since, of course, King Slime spawns a lot of slimes, each slime does drop a stable key crystal, or at least they have a pretty high chance to uh, drop them. It's not a guaranteed drop. And so that's going to be the method I used to kind of gain stable crew crystals in the early game. And it's just to kind of bully in King Slime. Now King Slime is pretty easy. So even with ha me having like no defense and no health increases, I was pretty confident that I could easily take him on. Like considering the fact that the power pole is pretty OP in the early game. So of course I'm going to be kind of fairly protected as I can stay quite a ways away from King Slime. This of course allows me to kind of spend a little bit more time dodging. I unfortunately did not have a hook or like Hermes boots or anything. So it was going to have to be a little bit on the more cautious side since I wasn't really going to have anything to kind of increase my speed in any way, shape or form. Anyways, after finishing the arena, I figured just to say YOLO and just well, spawn in King Slime immediately. I could wait for day, but what's the fun in that? It's only 28,000 HP, I bet I could beat this. Oh, I think I should have made the arena a lot bigger.
Easy. They need not to try. Let's see what's in the bag. Interesting. I think, uh... I think King Sly needs a bit of a buff. I think I'm gonna actually do Revengeance mode now. I mean, it is the intent experience for Calamity, so I guess so. Before my King Slime rematch, I decided to make the Z tables, that way we can actually kind of start doing stuff now. I, of course, didn't have enough key crystals to kind of make everything I kind of wanted to, but I did have enough to make a kind of standard kind of key blast. If you press C, you can charge your key, like what I am doing here, and then that, of course, will fill your key bar. You need a key in order to use any, like, the, like you know, the blasts and whatnot. Of course, in the early game, we won't really kind of be able to use these blasts a whole lot because we can't regenerate key passively at this point, and you will kind of use key pretty quickly. And not to mention that once you unlock like any sort of technique or transformation, that of course drains your key as well. I went to the left side of the world to go mining when I came across an old foe. I don't think I can take this guy on. Anyways, down in the mine shaft, I actually mined for quite a while. I actually had to cut out like almost like 20 minutes just of me mining. I actually finally came across a kind of proper cave system this time here. Um, the reason I was down in the mine is to make uh, some basic kind of key related armor. I needed cobwebs um, to make silk. And here I came across some gemstone trees. So that was of course pretty cool as I was going to need kind of gemstones in the sort of near future, but not yet. I came across a granite and elemental which dropped the night vision helmet, so this will help with kind of seeing stuff in the kind of um, early game when I don't have my torch out. You may not have noticed because I've been boosting the kind of brightness of darker scenes just to hopefully make it a little bit easier to read. Unfortunately, I was kind of full up on stuff at this point, so just kind of going through my inventory to hopefully trash some stuff that I didn't really need. I ended up coming across a gemstone cave, which of course was pretty cool. I unfortunately did not find any sort of diamonds, which was unfortunate because diamonds was kind of the main gemstone I was looking for, along with kind of sapphire and emerald. At this point, I definitely have more than enough kind of sapphire and emerald, but I didn't really find any diamonds, so I was a bit uh, disappointed with that. Anyways, after I was done mining in the gemstone cave, I teleported back up to the surface to convert all of my cobwebs into silk. Um, I unfortunately was only able to make one piece of the armor set, which was the pants. So I need to go ahead and head back down into the mine in order to get some more cobwebs to actually make the rest of the armor set. Thankfully, the armor set only includes a chest piece and pants, so I was halfway there when it came to the armor set. So I figured after I make the kind of full armor set, I was going to rematch King Slime. Anyway, back in the mine, I found a granite cave, which did have a minecart track in it, so that was pretty cool. Um, I figured it'd be a little bit of a detour since I didn't really need this to actually get cobwebs. Unfortunately, led to the desert as well as lava, which was kind of annoying. Anyways, I figured I could probably get around the lava by using my grappling hook. That, of course, turned out to be a fail. I fell into the lava and I figured it probably wasn't really worth it to try to get around it anyways. So I decided to kill the kind of slimes behind me and just kind of go back the way I came. So I exit the granite cave and did find a decent chunk of cobwebs. Not really sure how I missed this when I came down here the first time, but I guess the first time I came down here I wasn't really specifically looking for cobwebs like I kind of was now. I found even more pockets of cobwebs. I unfortunately ended up dying in the cave due to um, missing a hook, but I figured that that's probably enough uh, cobwebs to get all the silk I needed anyways to make the chest piece. Anyways, back at the surface, I converted all my cobwebs into silk and finally made the last piece of armor that I needed. So I finally had a full set of armor now. So with my new set of armor, I was feeling pretty confident in myself and I figured that the Desert Scourge would probably be the next boss I take on if I didn't do the King Slime rematch first. Um, but before that, I decided to just kind of um, long off and take a little bit of a break and just kind of come back to this tomorrow. So after taking a little break, 
I figured that the next best thing I could probably do right now in preparation for bosses is probably expanding the arena. As it is currently, it's a kind of a decent size, but eventually I am going to want to have an arena that's a little bit longer. And of course, I will eventually make it taller, but I don't really think I need to worry about arena height until much later on. So I guess enjoy yet another arena building montage. So before I took on King Slime, I decided to kind of check crafting recipes again just to see if there was anything that I could make that would help. As I've ever actually never done um, Revengeance Mode Calamity before, and I've actually only ever beaten Calamity kind of one time before. Um, but I did see that there was the kind of farmer shotgun that I can make. I just kind of had to get some boreal wood from the snow biome, so I figured that that would probably be the next best thing I was going to do. But of course something that I completely forgot is that I don't have the arms dealer here yet so I wasn't actually going to be able to use the farmer shotgun even if I did make it um, since I can't really buy any bullets yet. Anyways, once I was here in the snow biome I figured it would probably be a good time to actually go and explore it just to see if I could find any ice skates, hermy boots, or magic uh, mirror. I did luckily find a kind of frozen house um, Pretty close to the surface, but it's just kind of a figuring out how am I actually going to get there. Um, I figured just mining there would probably be the fastest and easiest way to go about it, so that's just what I did. Um, anyways, when I opened the chest I was a little bit disappointed as I just found an ice blade which I can't really use. I mean I guess I could use it, but it wouldn't really kind of fit the spirit of the playthrough. So I kind of left that and decided to go exploring even further down the snow biome. Which I came across a sapphire crawler, so I thought that was pretty cool. I'm just getting a little bit of extra sapphire, which I was going to need for magic storage, as well as some accessories kind of later on. Uh, thankfully, I kind of saw the faint red glow of a heart crystal, so that was always fine, fun to see. I finally was actually going to be able to increase my health instead of just having the kind of standard um, 100 health. There was some tiny bit of sapphire around, so I decided to grab a little bit of that before heading down to get the crystal. Anyway, so of course I picked up the crystal and decided to head further down, which I saw yet yeah, another faint red glow of yet another heart crystal. So two heart crystals back to back is um, pretty nice, I will say, I will say. Finally, it is nice to be able to uh, start to be able to increase my health a little bit. Not that I would really need the increased health against King Slime, but it is just nice to be able to start working on my health just a little bit. There was a third life crystal just up to the top here. It was a bit of an annoying spot because it means I was going to have to dig diagonally up, but I just kind of just said screw it and just kind of did it anyways. Anyways, after grabbing the life crystal, I just kind of went back up to just explore the mine a little bit more. I unfortunately didn't really kind of find anything of interest, so I just kind of teleported back home and just decided to cut my losses there. Back up the surface, I of course made the farmer shotgun, which was the main reason I went to the snow biome in the first place. I put it in my weapon slot acting like I was going to use it, but of course I didn't. I decided to make the two extra key weapons that I wasn't able to um, craft before because I did get a little bit more crystals um, while I was kind of down there. Uh, before King Slime I decided to kind of show them off a little bit. So this is the uh, destructive energy wave, which is just kind of your standard beam attack which you would see all the time within Dragon Ball. And the key beam of course is just a uh, beam. I don't really much to kind of say about these two, I won't really be using the energy wave a whole lot as it's a bit too slow and doesn't really do enough damage, but the key beam I will be using a lot more just due to its piercing capability. Anyways, with that brief showcase out of the way, here's the King Slime rematch.
I completely forgot to map the adrenaline button. I could start pressing random buttons. Oh, it's B. This calamity rewards you for being actually good at the game. Oh. Um. Can't seem to reach it. Too easy. Not even a challenge. And with that, I think I'm going to call episode one here. I think it's a pretty good uh, jumping off point. I did record a little bit uh, past this. I did end up beating Desert Scourge and I Cthulhu within the session. I was originally planning to kind of include it within here, but just kind of looking at the kind of time, I figured I'll kind of save it for episode two. Anyways, if you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and join Discord. Link is down below in the description. And stay tuned for episode two. I am really committed to kind of finishing the series properly this time. And with that, have a nice day.